everyone and welcome to the Oak Lords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to make one of the most popular bags of the season. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making the H2O to go sling from Lynn's Handmade. So this bag is so unique and such a cool idea. It's a bag that's main purpose is to hold a water bottle, a smaller water bottle, a bigger water bottle, but then you have this beautiful front pocket here, which is completely optional. So if you want an easier make and you don't need the pocket, skip the front pocket and just make the water bottle holder and it's like super fast. So when you open up this front pocket, you pull it down and the pattern has an option for a card slot and a slip po pocket or you can do two slip pockets, or you can do just one slip pocket. You can really do whatever you want to make this pattern as quick or as easy as you need it to be. I chose one slip pocket and one smaller pocket with a pen pocket here. Let me grab, let me grab one of these beautiful pens. So you can see I put my pen in the pen pocket, and then you can put whatever you want right here. You can put your phone, you can put your credit cards, whatever you need right there, and then you have another slip pocket that will hold a phone. Close that up, zip that up, and then in the top here, look, this is my giant water bottle. I have this with me all the time. I don't know how big it is. 32 ounces. This is a 32 ounce water bottle. I carry it with me. It doesn't go in my bag. I usually just carry it by the handle like this. But now I can put that in here. See, fits snug as a bug in a rug. So this is a crossbody bag. So I'm just gonna put it on real quick and then we'll talk about all the material. So I would wear it across my body like this. You could also just wear it across your shoulder. And then let me get on my little step stool here. So you can see this is how it hangs with the water bottle in it. Again, I have a very large water bottle. It's just a nice fit. It doesn't stick out too far. It's not like gonna hit everything as you're walking around. You can have it up a little bit higher, have it up a little bit lower, but it's just a really nice flattering shape. And I just think this is such a cool bag. Okay, so now let's talk about the materials that I used for this version. I know this version is very muted compared to most of the bags that I made. On the exterior, I used a waxed canvas. I love waxed canvas because it really shows its wear. So again, I think this is like a great men's bag. And then on the lining of the water bottle section, I actually use waterproof canvas, which is what she suggests in the pattern. Waterproof canvas is great at, you know, withstanding some moisture. It's also really nice because you don't have to interface it. So it's really easy to work with and it's a quick project. For this front pocket here on the exterior, I just used the same wax canvas. And then on the interior, I use mainly quilt cotton. I have wax canvas on the backing right here, but then quilt cotton for the pocket, quilt cotton for this pocket, and quilt cotton for the backing of the front pocket. And then in the pattern, she does recommend using cotton webbing for your strap. I just don't have any on hand, so I made my own using one side as waterproof canvas and the other side as a quilt cotton. I'll be doing that in the tutorial as well today. So this is just such a fun and unique gift idea. I think that this would be so useful for men and women, for teens, for kids, any of us who carry water bottles around, right? I mean, you know someone in your life who always has a water bottle. Maybe it's you, maybe it's a loved one. I'm that person, I don't go anywhere without my water bottle. So this is super handy. I could wear this in addition to like a shoulder bag if I needed to. If I'm just going out to run errands, I can just take this. I don't need to bring the big bag. I can just take my ID, my credit card, the basics, put it in here with my water bottle and I'm good to go. So before we get started, I just want you to know that the designer for this bag pattern, Linz from Linz Handmade, has a tutorial on her YouTube channel walking you through this bag. She also gives you lots of tips and tricks. I'm gonna have a link for her channel down in the description. Make sure you go check it out. Make sure you subscribe. This is such a popular bag. I think most of you have already made it and those of you who haven't, you're gonna get on the H2O to go train because this is a fun one to make. It is a little challenging. This is a very round bottom, so there are some curves. You can see that mine is not perfect. I've got some pleating. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be using quilt cotton, and I just wanna see if that's a little bit easier to work with than the wax canvas. I do love the wax canvas because it's almost like putty, so it doesn't stretch as much as quilt cotton, but it does allow you to kind of mush it in different ways. So if you haven't tried wax canvas before, I highly suggest you give it a try. I will leave a link for where I purchased mine down in the description of this video. So if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all you wanna say, leave them down in the comment section down below. At the very top of the comment section will be a comment from me, and it will have the timestamps for every single step of this tutorial. This is a bag that comes together much quicker than you think it will. I, I gotta be honest, I kinda put off making this bag for a little bit because I thought, oh, it's gonna be kind of involved, it's gonna take a while. Cutting the material for this is very, very fast for a bag pattern, and putting it all together also very, very quick. 
Once again, if you just don't add the front pocket and just make the bag without the pocket, it's super fast. So I'm gonna show you how I make the strap. I'm gonna show you any tweaks, any changes I make, but we are gonna be doing the card slot pockets. We are gonna be using Quilt Cotton. It's going to be a fun video. All right, let's get started. So here's what I'll be using for the exterior and the interior of the bag. From the exterior, you're gonna need about a fat quarter for the body and then about a fat quarter for the accent. So this little Grinch fabric right here, this is gonna be the accent front pocket. And then the main body of the bag is going to be used with this green fabric. You're going to want about a 30 of a yard of waterproof canvas. Now I'll be using waterproof canvas for my strap as well as the interior that holds the water bottle. So I have a full yard here to get that nice long cut of the strap. I also have about a half of a yard here of quill cotton, which I'll be using for the lining pockets. Most quill cotton pieces will be interfaced with this woven fuse here just to give it a little bit more structure. You'll want at least a half a yard of that. You're gonna also want about a quarter of a yard of either Peltex or Decoville Light. I just have a scrap piece of Decoville Light here. This is just to stabilize the base of the bag, so you really don't need much of it at all. So here's a bunch of the other stuff we'll be using. You're gonna want at least a 16 inch long zipper. I have zipper tape here from Sally Tomato. I'll also be using the zipper pull that comes with it. You're gonna need two one inch D-rings. The pattern recommends one and a half inch hardware for the strap, however, I don't have that, so instead I'll be using a one inch strap slider and two one inch swivel hooks, and I'll be making my own strap, which I'll show you how to do. I also have some rivets here for my strap. I like to use this hole punch anytime I'm using my rivets. I have this quarter inch double-sided tape. Now this is very, very heavy duty tape, and I use it for the strap, but I try my best not to sew over it. If you're gonna be using quarter inch tape that you will be sewing over, make sure you use the Dritz wash away quarter inch tape. I always have these two marking tools on hand, a white chalk pencil and then an air erasing marker. The thread I'll be using in my top thread today is a Mara 70 weight thread and it's just a little bit thicker and looks nice on the bag. In the bobbin I'll be using a Mara 100 weight thread and the needle I'll be using is a Microtex 8012. So here we have our main body liner and our main body exterior. If you wanted to completely forego that front pocket, just cut your exterior from the lining template so you wouldn't have this little hole right here. However, I will be using the pocket today so I have both versions. My main body liner is waterproof canvas, it is not interfaced with anything. And my main body exterior is made from quilt cotton and it's interfaced with woven interfacing. So next we have the zipper pocket. Now this is that front zipper pocket accent. This is the one where if you have like a fun piece of fabric that you really want to use, but you don't want to use a ton of it, this is a great opportunity to use it on that pocket. And then you'll also have a lining piece. Both of these are quilt cotton interfaced with woven fuse. The next piece is our slip pocket. This is just a quilt cotton piece with the woven interfacing. After that is our credit card slot pocket. Again, this is optional. She has the measurements for this in the pattern and I cut it down that way. And then I just cut a skinnier strip of my woven fuse because I'm trying to make sure that these edges don't get very bulky. So I cut my woven fuse an inch narrower and then about two inches shorter. To go with your credit card slot pocket, you're gonna have your two card slot side panels. These will go on the side of the credit card slot pocket once it's all folded up. I'm using quilt cotton here and I did not interface either of these with woven interfacing. And then you'll have a back panel for your credit card slot pocket and this is quilt cotton interfaced with woven interfacing. I just wanted to note that we have the back pocket liner template piece. We're gonna actually use this after we build the credit card slot pocket to cut it down to size. So if you're doing the credit card slot pocket, don't cut this out just yet. If you're not gonna be doing the credit card slot pocket, then go ahead and cut out one of your main fabrics and make sure you interface it if necessary. Next up, we have the base of the bag. So you're gonna need one cut of your exterior fabric and then one cut of your lining fabric for the base. This is going to be the base that holds the water bottle. So if you're using that waterproof canvas, use it here. Both of these pieces have that stiff interfacing already applied to them. And my cool cotton piece has the woven interfacing applied to it as well. Next, we'll have the D-ring strap holder. Now I do prefer my D-ring straps to be pretty beefy. So I'm using waterproof canvas for that. If you're using cool cotton, just make sure you interface it really well because those straps do take a beating. After that, we have our zipper tabs. Now you're gonna want two pieces that's gonna match your front pocket and then you can use two lining cuts. Both of these are cool cotton and neither of them are interfaced with anything. And then for the crossbody strap, I have one cut of waterproof canvas and one cut of quilt cotton. My quilt cotton is interfaced with the woven interfacing. Each of these is cut at two inches by 58 inches long. That's how long I like my crossbody straps to be. I like them to be able to be nice and long if I want them long, nice and short if I want them short. 
We're gonna be building our own crossbody strap today. However, if you have cotton webbing, that is a much quicker and easier option. You can just attach the hardware in the end and be done. But if you wanted to see how to build it, I will show you how to build that strap. So let's first start with the zipper. We want our zipper tape to be 14 inches long. So I'm just going to use my ruler and cut this down to size. Don't forget to add your zipper pull. Now grab your four zipper tabs, take one of your linings and lay it right side up, and then take your zipper and lay it right side up, right on top of it, matching up the shorter edges. And then I just clip the zipper to that zipper tab, and then take one of your exterior pieces of fabric and lay that right side down over the top of the right side of your zipper tape, line it up with the short edges, and just include it in those clips. We're making a little zipper sandwich here. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along these two short edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're then gonna press the tabs away from the zipper and then just top stitch right over the tabs to hold them in place really nicely. So once you have this all sewn together, just measure out your zipper. It should be about 19 and three quarters of an inch long. Mine is a little bit longer than that, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it being just a scotch longer than that. If you are concerned, you can always trim down the edges just a tiny bit, but you don't, you don't wanna mess with this too much because this is going to be a zipper that's on a curve. But I'll just I'll shave off the ends just to get it right at 19 and three quarters of an inch. Now take your zipper and fold it in half and we're gonna find the midpoint. And then just pinch your zipper in half and you can use a marker here or you can use scissors to kind of clip a little triangle just to mark this midpoint, make it easier to see. And then Lynn suggests grabbing your scissors and making tiny little cuts along the edge of your zipper tape. They should only be at the most an eighth of an inch in. And this is just gonna help that zipper tape curve around so I'm just kind of taking my scissors and just very gently going down this. I'm gonna do this on both sides, just cutting little almost eighth of an inch slits into the tape so that it will spread easier. Now grab your zipper pocket exterior and let's find the midpoints along this one as well. So I'm just gonna fold this in half like a hot dog. And this time I'm gonna use my scissors to just do a tiny clip at the very top and then also a tiny clip on the very bottom. There we go. And by clipping it, it just makes it a little bit easier to see the midpoint on both sides of the fabric. Now grab your zipper, and when the zipper is closed, it should be on the left side, so when you open it, it goes to the right, when you close it, it goes to the left. Take your zipper, and with the zipper pull on the left side, rotate your zipper so it's right side down. Match up the midpoint mark on your zipper with that midpoint mark on your exterior zipper panel and then I just use a clip to hold that in place. And then take your left edge and then just fold it down around that curve so that the zipper is still right side down and make sure the short edge of your zipper tabs come right up against that bottom corner of your exterior zipper pocket. So it should just square up really nicely right there and then just clip that in place. Let's do the same thing on the other side, just pulling our zipper tape down Again, right side against the right side of the exterior panel. Line up that corner and clip together. Now what we're gonna do is just clip down the remaining of the edge. So you can start at the top or the bottom. We wanna clip this down and the zipper is just going to bend around that top curve. Now this curve is pretty sharp. You can always rotate this and kind of do the bowl shape here where you just push down the back of the exterior into the zipper, just like that but it should line up okay. Go ahead and clip the opposite edge as well. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna baste the zipper down. So I'm gonna sew it on at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance at a really long stitch. I will be using my zipper foot for the next few steps. So before we move on to the next step, I'm going to add my bag tag because I always forget to add a bag tag. 
Now you could have done this before you basted the zipper on as well because you would have had your midpoint mark. So I went ahead and measured up from the bottom midpoint mark six and a half inches towards the top and I made a center point mark. I'm just gonna take my washer for my bag tags and lay it right over that mark. And then I'm just gonna mark in the washer the slits for my bag tag. Now I'm just gonna grab my seam ripper and I'm going to seam rip along those two marks for my washer. Now I have a couple pieces of Decoville light here. I'm going to mark those slits in one of those pieces as well. And then cut along that slit. Now I can take my metal bag tag, insert it through that zipper exterior panel, add that Decoville light over the back of it, and then I can add my washer, and then pull apart those prongs. There we go. Let's center it a little bit better. And now I have another piece of Decoville light, and I'm just gonna place that over the back of my washer so that these prongs don't push against the lining panel. You can fuse this on. I like to just use glue. I know I didn't show any of this stuff in the beginning of the video, but if you've been here for a little while, you've seen me use all of these materials and you know that the glue and the seam ripper and the bag tag are staples. So I just coated the back with some glue and I'm just gonna smoosh that over that metal on the back. There we go. And there we go. Now we have our bag tag attached. You can go ahead and put this to the side for just a moment. Next up, grab your slip pocket and we're gonna fold this in half, wrong sides together, lining up those short edges. And then just press along that top edge. You can press this with an iron or honestly, you can just finger press this because we're just going to sew it down. So I'm just finger pressing it. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along this edge. I'm gonna do one row of top stitching that's an eighth of an inch from the folded edge and then another row that's a half of an inch. So once you have this top stitch, grab your zipper pocket lining and lay your pocket right side up on the top of the right side of your zipper pocket lining and line up the side and bottom edges. And you can just clip this in place. And now we can take this to the sewing machine and just baste along the side and bottom edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab your zipper pocket exterior and lay it right side up and then take your zipper pocket lining and lay that right side down and we're just gonna smush that zipper in between them. And we're gonna clip all edges together, right sides together. You might have to get creative with how you smush that zipper in there. One thing you can do is open up this zipper all the way, and then just take the unattached zipper edge and pull it down towards the bottom and clip it towards that bottom seam. That way it's out of the way and you don't have to worry about accidentally sewing over it. And then we're just gonna clip around the entire top and side edges. Now we're gonna sew along these two straight edges and the curved top at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just go slow and make sure you're using a zipper foot and just feel for that zipper tape as you go around the curve to keep it nice and flat. Once you have these sewn together, just reach inside and we're gonna flip this right side out. So now gently tug around your zipper to try to get it as straight as possible. To be honest, I always have my zipper a little wonky. It's never really totally straight. I think it adds character, so I'm okay with it. So now if you'd like, you can use an iron and press along this edge to get it nice and smooth and flat. So once you have the seam pressed the way you want it, now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along that front zipper pocket at an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the seam around the zipper. And then we're gonna just close the bottom by base stitching along the bottom edge as well. What I do at the sewing machine is just kind of tug on this as I go. But like I said, my curves are never perfect. <laughs>
once you're done, it should look something like this. I know top stitching on this can be a little tricky. I mean, you can see on the lining side, I didn't quite catch it. It's not very perfect. I'm okay with that. Using thread that will match or coordinate with your panel is going to help you if you're not a strong top stitcher. But I know some of you guys are amazing top stitchers and you would use something that would really stand out. So I think that's cool. So now we can put this to the side and work on the credit card slots. So the first thing we wanna do is measure six inches from the top of our credit card slot pocket, fold it wrong sides together at that six inch mark, and then press with your iron. So make sure you mark on your credit card pocket all of the markings that it suggests. Don't forget that top marking up at the top. This is where our folded edge is. And then you're gonna have your pinch marks and then you're gonna have your top edge marks. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. First, we're gonna to go to this first line right here and you can just pinch right along that line, wrong sides together, just like this, and bring up that pinched folded edge to meet that top marked line right here by that folded edge. So you can see we have two lines for most of these pockets. One is where we fold it and pinch the fabric. And then the second line is where the next pocket's gonna come up to meet. So I'm gonna push down this entire panel and I'm gonna grab my iron and just iron over it to keep it nice and flat. Make sure you're keeping the edges straight the entire time. So now we're gonna go to our next set of markings and I'm gonna take that top mark and I'm going to pinch the fabric so that it's wrong sides together, right along that top mark. Make sure you're not pinching the bottom material when you do this. So I'm just pinching that top mark right there. I'm just going right along my marked edge, just like that. And now I'm going to take this and fold it up to meet that bottom marked line right here. So remember here we have the top edge of that first pocket and then we have a marked line right beneath it. So we're just going to bring this up to meet that marked line, just like that. And I'm gonna finger press it down, making sure all my edges are nice and lined up, and then I'll just press it with the iron. All right, and then for the last set of lines, we're gonna do the same thing. On the top line, we're going to pinch the fabric, wrong sides together, right along that whole line, and then pull it up to meet that marked line that's just below the second pocket, here we go. Press it down with our fingers and press. And then our last line here towards the bottom is a pinch line, so we're just going to pinch that. There we go. Bring it up to meet that bottom marked line. Here we go, line everything up and then give it a press. So I cut my credit card slot pocket just a little bit short. But to be honest, I'm actually okay with it. I just kind of push down the slots a little bit more and let me make sure that they're still deep. Oh yeah, that's fine. They'll still be fine. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along each of the folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna base down the side and bottom edges just to hold everything in place nicely. So next, grab your back card slot piece and lay it right side up. Take your little card slot unit and lay it right side up, right on top of that back card slot piece, lining up the side and the bottom edges. Grab some clips to hold it in place. Now let's just base these two pieces together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just gonna go down the sides and the bottom of my card slot pockets. Next, grab your card slot side pieces and we're gonna just attach these to the side of this card slot middle piece. So take one of your side pieces and line it up with the right side and lay them right sides together. Go ahead and clip that in place. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Take the left side and lay it right sides together along that long edge. Now we're gonna sew along both of these long edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn in place, let's go ahead and press these side seams open. So the seams are gonna go behind the side panels. There we go, and I'm just pressing with an iron 
to get it nice and flat. So once you have that pressed, let's go and top stitch along these side panels at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the midpoint mark on the bottom and the top. So I'm just gonna fold this in half and I'm really just lining up those seams on the side. I'm not too worried about the edges of the straps. And then I'll just cut along that bottom edge to mark the midpoint and I'll do the same thing on the top. Now grab your back pocket liner template and line up the little midpoint marks on your template with the midpoint marks on your panel that you just cut. And now I'm just gonna grab my chalk pencil and trace around this paper template so I know where to cut. This can be a little tricky because that card slot pocket makes it like a little hill in the middle. Just do your best. Bags are nice, we have a lot of wiggle room. If it's a little off, it's okay, we can fix it while we're sewing. All right, there we go. So I have this traced out on my panel and now I'm just gonna cut it out with my fabric scissors. All right, now your other zipper pocket is ready to go. Let's go ahead and set this to the side. So now let's get ready to put this whole thing together. First, we wanna mark the midpoints on our main exterior panel. So I'm just gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna use the tiniest, tiniest clip right on the edge on both sides. So now grab your exterior zipper panel and lay that right side up. And you wanna lay it inside this little opening right here, just like this. Now take your zipper panel and just flip it up so that the right side goes down and we have this raw edge of our zipper tape right here. Now looking at this raw edge of your zipper, find your midpoint mark and this might be easier if you unzip this. But find that midpoint mark on the raw edge of your zipper and with the zipper right side down, line up the midpoint mark of the zipper with the midpoint mark on the center of this inner curve right here and then just clip that together just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this up, pinning right sides together, the right side of your exterior with the right side of your zipper, all the way down. So I'm gonna start with this bottom left edge here. So I'm lifting my exterior panel up, right side down, so that it comes right sides together with this zipper tab down here, and just clip in place. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna pick up this right edge, so it's the inner right corner of my little curve, and I'm pulling it down so it's right sides together with the right side of the exterior fabric for my zipper tab. And then I'm just gonna clip that in place as well. And now I'm gonna go around this entire zipper, clipping the zipper right sides together with that exterior panel along that raw edge. Let's go all the way around. So once you have it all clipped, it should look just like this. Now we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. At the sewing machine, we're gonna sew it with the lining side of the pocket up. So we're just gonna fold the exterior back and slowly go around the edge, making sure we stop and refold as we continue around the top edge and then fold the other side back as we get there. The thing here is we don't wanna get any of the exterior panel under the needle as we're sewing. We also wanna keep this pocket out of the way. You can just clip this if you need to. And we're gonna sew along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn on, you can just take a little look at it. That step actually is much easier than you think it's going to be. I think probably the harder part is this front pocket and then the bottom is, is a little tricky, but this step is not that bad. It looks harder than it is. So now flip your panel over so it's wrong side up. And now grab your lining pocket with the card slots and lay it right side down so it's lining right sides together. And we're just gonna line this up with the curved zipper edge that we just sewed together all the way around. All right, once you have it all clipped together, we're gonna to take this back to the sewing machine and sew again along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. What you wanna do is sew with the previous stitching side up so you can see it, and you're gonna sew right over it or just slightly 
in towards the center of that stitching. So we don't want these stitches to show. So if you sew on the outside towards the seam, those stitches will show in the end. So right on top or just slightly to the left of those stitches. Here we go. Isn't this cool? I love that. I love that little card slot pocket and little slip pocket behind it, slip pocket here. This is such a cool, unique idea. I don't know how you designers come up with things like this, but this is awesome. All right, so if you need to grab your iron and press this seam, we want it to be nice and flat because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch it. So we're gonna top stitch it from the right side and it's gonna be on the exterior panel. So for me, it's that green fabric. And this is just gonna hold the seam really nicely in place. I'm just gonna be kind of pulling on this and straightening it out as I go at the sewing machine. We're gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now the front zipper pocket is completely attached. Now we just have to finish up the sides and the bottom. So take these side edges and pull them up right sides together. And we're just lining up this straight edge. So I'm gonna use some clips to hold it together. Now let's sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So once you have this edge sewn together, what you wanna do is just press it open. So that will help keep the seam nice and flat in the end. So I'm just finger pressing it and then I'll grab my iron and press it with my iron as well to help it stay down. Now what we want to do is mark four equal spots around the base. So take this center seam as one marking and line it up right sides together with your midpoint marking for your bottom edge by the zipper pocket. And I'm just going to clip that in place to hold it. And now pull along the edges, just like this, getting it nice and flat. Grab your scissors and cut a tiny triangle off that corner. So the same thing on the other side. So now we have four spots along the bottom edge of our exterior panel. Now grab your exterior base, and we wanna find the four marks for this as well. So you can just fold it, or you can use the marks that are on the pattern piece. So I'm just gonna fold it in half one way and clip the corner on both sides. And then I'll just fold it in half with the shorter edges, right sides together, and find the midpoints on the other sides as well. There we go. So now we're just gonna attach this bottom exterior piece to the exterior body of the bag. So now take your bottom piece and with one of the longer sides, line it up right sides together with that seam and clip in place. I'm gonna go on the opposite edge and take that other long side of my bottom piece and line it up with the midpoint that marks the middle of my front zipper pocket and clip that together. And then I'm going to clip the side pieces together where my marks are. You'll notice that you're starting to kind of tuck that bottom piece in to the center of your exterior piece. So what you start doing is you just kind of push it down in there and then clip around the edges. And this might require you to unclip and reclip and smooth out quite a bit. That's okay. Just do your best. And one thing I want you to think about when you're clipping here is that when we sew, we're gonna be sewing right along the edge of that Decoville light piece. So while you might have a fold over or a pleat towards the edge of the fabric, as long as it's not pleated right against that Decoville edge, you're not gonna see it in the end. So I try to just focus on keeping the fabric right around the edge of my Decoville light, nice and flat. And if it's pleated up towards the edge of the fabric, that doesn't bother me. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just right up against your Decoville light piece. When we sew, we wanna sew like this. So I'm gonna have it in the machine like this and I'm gonna be sewing from the inside of the bag around just like that. And I'll be using a zipper foot so that I can get nice and close to this Decoville light without having to worry about keeping everything too flat. Okay, so that is definitely the hardest part of this entire pattern. And especially for the front because it's such a big bulk right here with that zipper. As you can see, I went over it twice at the sewing machine. I like to go a second time around just to really enforce the stitching on the bottom. But then I also use that second time around to kind of close up and smooth out any edges. So I find when I'm going around these curves with the clips, sometimes as I'm moving things around, I'll get these little jagged stitches, you know, where it kind of bows out and comes back in. By going the second time around, it allows me to just kind of clean up those jagged edges and smooth it out. So now we're just gonna cut down the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. So I just, I cut it about halfway through the seam. So yeah, it looks pretty good. If you followed your Decoville light, it should be a pretty smooth, circular-ish base. And I am okay with this. I don't see any big pleating or anything. This looks good. All right, so I'm gonna turn this back to wrong side out. When you're turning this back and forth, if you find that your Decoville light is pulling up on you quite a bit, you can always grab some glue and just glue it down, but you should be okay. So let's just put this to the side for a moment while we work on the lining. Now from the lining panel, let's just find the midpoint marks real quick of this top curved edge and this bottom straight edge. So you can just fold it in half and mark it or clip it. So now take your lining panel and fold it right sides together along those straight short edges and then just use some clips to hold these together. Grab your ruler and mark a five inch opening in the center. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but only from the bottom to that first mark and then from the next mark to the top. Leave the center open and make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. So now do your best to press open the seam. You can use double-sided tape here if you'd like. I'm gonna use the leather double-sided tape, but I'm not gonna extend it all the way to the ends because I really don't wanna sew over that. So I'm just gonna start it about a half of an inch down and run it along this edge of the seam until I get about a half of an inch from the bottom. And I can just use my fingers to finger press it down. There we go. Now we'll hold that in place and I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side as well. So now take the bottom edge of your lining, that seam right there, and line it up with your midpoint mark that you marked previously. And then pull on the sides so we can find the midpoint between those two midpoints. Grab your scissors and just clip that edge. Let's do the same thing on the other side. We're just finding four points that are all equal length apart. Now grab your lining base, and if you haven't already, let's find those four midpoint marks on this as well. So I can just fold it in half with the longer edges together and clip, and then fold in half again with the shorter edges coming together and clip along the top and bottom. So now take one of the midpoint marks on the longer edge of your base and line that up right sides together with that seam on your lining, clip in place. Flip it over and do the same thing. The longer edge of your base with the midpoint of your lining. And then match up the other two marks with the sides. So this time, instead of making a bowl shape, we wanna keep the base nice and flat and just kind of pull out the lining body panel. 
So I'm just gonna clip around the entire base of this. All right, now she suggests sewing this with the lining side up this time and the base side down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance all along the base. So the lining is a little bit of a struggle. It's not perfect, but I think that the bottom of my water bottle will not mind. So we're gonna just trim this down to a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you can go ahead and flip this right side out since that's how we're going to attach it. All right, once you're done with your lining, you can go ahead and put this to the side. Now grab your D-ring connector and lay it right side down. Draw a line down the center to mark your midpoint. And since I'm using waterproof canvas, it doesn't really help if I press it with an iron. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of tape and I'm going to put my double-sided tape right along that center mark. And I'm not letting it go all the way to the edges because once again, I'm trying to avoid sewing over it. So then I'll remove the tape. Take one long edge and fold it up to that midpoint line so it should meet that midpoint line and the very edge of the strap should go on the tape. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, folding that down and just the very edge of my waterproof canvas is going on the tape and this is all wrong sides together. There we go. And that just holds it really nice without having to use a bunch of clips or pressing this. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along both long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have this top stitch, just fold this in half, lining up those two shorter edges. Grab your scissors and just cut along that fold. And now you have two D-ring straps. Grab your D-rings and fold the raw edged back of your D-ring strap around that flat edge on your D-ring. So we're just covering up those raw edges. We don't want those to be seen in the end. Grab a clip and just hold it together. Do the same thing with the other D-ring and strap. Now grab your exterior unit and you can flip this right side out if you'd like or you can just keep it as is. I'm just gonna keep it as is. And what we wanna do is we wanna find the midpoint on the top little edges of our exterior panel. So I'm just gonna fold them in half right sides together and clip the fold just to find where the middle is. So once you have that midpoint mark, grab your D-ring strap and you wanna let about a half of an inch of the D-ring strap overhang this top edge of your exterior and then just center it on your midpoint mark, just like that, and clip in place. Repeat this with the other side, and remember we're clipping this to the right side of our exterior panel. Now, we can just go baste these on at the sewing machine, sewing an eighth of an inch away from the edge of your exterior panel. Once you have those D-ring straps connected, now we just have to put these two units together. So with the lining side right side out and the exterior right side in, insert your lining into your exterior and you want the midpoint seam that goes on the lining to be on the opposite side as the seam on your exterior. So you can see here on my exterior, that seam runs along right here. So I'm just gonna insert this so that my seam is running along the card slot pocket side. So you just have to push it in there. Don't worry about it being too perfectly lined up on the inside. What we wanna do is we wanna line it up on this top edge. So first I'm gonna line up these top edges of the strap just like this. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And then you can take your midpoint mark that's on your lining and line that up with the center seam that's on the exterior. Clip that together. Do the same thing where you line up the midpoint mark that's on the exterior with that center seam that's on your lining. There we go. It gets a little tight around this pocket over here. And now just clip around the rest of this entire curved top edge. All right, so now we're gonna sew along this clipped top edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
It's easiest here if you use a zipper foot because that will let you get close to the D-ring on the tops and on the sides, as well as getting close to that pocket right here. I will be sewing this with the lining side wrong side up, so I'll be sewing from the inside of the bag just like this. Once you have that top edge sewn in place, we're just going to trim down the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch. She suggests using pinking shears here so that you can really smooth out those edges when we turn it, but I don't have pinking shears, so I'm just going to cut into it. Make sure you don't trim down your D-ring tabs. Let those overhang the seam allowance. That'll help provide some extra support for that strap. So since I don't have pinking shears, I'm just gonna snip into the seam allowance just about halfway, so about an eighth of an inch, all the way around these curves so that when I turn it right side out, they should smooth out nicely. So once you have the top edge all taken care of, reach inside and pull your lining out, and then reach through your lining and pull out the exterior. Push out your exterior completely, flip your lining so that it is right side out. I like to put my hand in through the lining opening and push out these bottom edges just to make it nice and flat here. And then I actually like to top stitch the top edge before closing up this hole. So I'm going to poke out my straps. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. If you need to, grab a turning tool to insert into those straps just to poke up those corners really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna insert my lining into my exterior. And then what I'm gonna do is just roll this top edge and add clips to it to get it as straight as possible. If I have any areas that I can't quite roll from the exterior, then I can use that hole in the lining to either put in my turning tool or my hand to help smooth out this top edge. So I'm gonna go around the entire top edge, getting it nice and straight. All right, once you have that top edge clipped or pressed and just smoothed out however you need it smoothed out, take this back to the sewing machine and top stitch around the entire edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. looking just adorable. This is such a fun bag. Oh my gosh, I can think of so many ways to customize this. Okay, so I'm just gonna reach in and pull out that lining one last time, just so I can close up that hole. So if you taped or pressed this lining, it should be folded in pretty nicely. Just add a couple clips to hold it in place. And now let's top stitch along this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. After that's all closed up, just push the lining back into your bag. So let me just test it out real quick with my giant water bottle. Oh yeah, that fits perfect. Isn't that just adorable? Oh, I love this bag. All right, now let's build the strap. So there are a lot of ways to do the strap. I'm just gonna show you how I do it. First, we have to prep the waterproof canvas and then we'll prep the quilt cotton and then we'll just put it all together. So I'm grabbing my ruler and I am going to mark a midpoint line along the back of the entire waterproof canvas strap. So this is just an inch in. I'm just gonna go down the entire length of this, marking that midpoint. After I have that mark, then I'm gonna grab my very, very sticky double-sided leather tape, and I'm going to run this tape along that midpoint mark. Now I'm going to just start probably about two inches from one edge, and then I'll stop two inches from the other edge because we need to work on those short edges, and I trying to avoid sewing over this. So once you have the tape attached, you can then just remove the paper and then fold the long raw edges of your strap 
wrong sides together up to meet that midpoint mark and the edge should just go right on that tape and that should hold it in place just fine. So for the spots that didn't quite reach the tape, I just used some clips there. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just folding down the raw edge. So the raw edges should be meeting one another now. And the tape should, for the most part, hold it all together. So once you have the waterproof canvas strap folded, just put it to the side for a moment. Grab your quilt cotton strap and your iron and just fold this wrong sides together along the long edge and just press. We're gonna use the iron to help us find our midpoint mark here instead of marking with a pen. You could also mark this with a pen if you'd like instead of pressing. So once you have this pressed in half or just marked down the midpoint, open it back up and then take these short edges and line them up wrong sides together to meet that pressed midpoint mark and just press along the entire strap. So we're doing the same thing with the quilt cotton strap that we did with the waterproof canvas strap. So once you have one edge pressed, go ahead and do the same thing with the other edge. So both of the long raw edges should be pressed in towards the center to meet. So now grab both the waterproof canvas strap and your quilt cotton strap, and we're gonna lie them so that the raw edge sides are together. So that way we're just gonna kind of smush them in there. And when you look at the strap, it'll be a finished edge on both sides. So I just grab some clips and clip the two straps together, wrong sides together. Okay, once you have the two straps clipped together lengthwise, now let's just close up these short edges. So I'm gonna start with the waterproof canvas side first. I'm just gonna fold it down anywhere between a quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch. And I just fold the short edge wrong sides together and then I'm gonna refold those two long edges in to meet and that should hide that raw short edge. So I'm just gonna clip that back. And then what I do is I flip this over and I repeat this with the quilt cotton side and I just fold it so that it's the same length as my waterproof canvas. So I'll just fold it down, make sure it's the same length refold those edges together and clip in place. I'm gonna repeat that with this edge. I can see that my quilt cotton strap is a little bit longer than the waterproof canvas, so I'll just trim that down. So once again, I'm gonna start with the waterproof canvas edge. I'm gonna fold it down, and I'm gonna fold the short edge down, wrong sides together, about 3 eighths of an inch, and then refold the long edges back in hiding all of my raw edges. And then I'll just flip this over and fold down my quilt cotton side in the same amount so that it matches up with my waterproof canvas. There we go. Okay, once your strap is all clipped together and the short edges are hidden, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along all four edges, the two long ones and the two short ones, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just top stitching. Grab your slider and your two rings. I'm gonna be using my rivet press to assemble the rest of this, but you could also use a sewing machine here. So I'm also gonna grab my rivets. First, figure out which side of your strap is the right side, which side is the wrong side. I think that the red side is gonna be my right side. So with the wrong side up against this middle slider bar, insert your strap up from the bottom on the left side of the slider and then insert it back down through the opposite edge so you have your strap wrong sides together and the middle of that slider is enclosed with the strap. And then you can have your strap extend anywhere between an inch and an inch and a half. Since I'm using a rivet, I can make it a little bit shorter, so about an inch. Mark a center spot for your rivet and you can do two rivets here if you'd like. I'm just gonna do one. I'm gonna grab my handheld hole punch, and I like to use this just because I don't have to change out the dies in my rivet if I'm using the hole punch like this. 
So punch the hole, grab one of your rivets, insert it into that hole you just punched. Make sure you put the female end on as well as the male end. And then use your rivet press to just press this down and set it. And there we go. Now we have the slider attached. So take your slider wrong side up, make sure it's nice and straight. The hook part should be against the right side. So the red side is for me. So I'm inserting this upside down so that the hook part will be on the red side. Just pull it down a little bit. Now again, keeping your strap as straight as possible, fold over your strap wrong sides together and then bring that edge of your strap up through the left side of your slider. Give it a good amount of slack and then push it back down through the right side of your slider. You see I have my ring on one side, the slider in the middle, and then a raw edge here on the other side. I'm gonna take my remaining ring and I'm gonna put that up so that the hook part is on the same side as the right side. And then just fold the strap wrong sides together about an inch. I'm gonna mark placement for my rivet. Use my hole punch to punch out the hole where I marked it. And then just grab a rivet and push it through that hole and then attach the female end. And now I can just set it with my rivet press. And there you go, now your custom strap is all ready to go. All right, I got real excited and I already added the strap, but let's take a look. Oh, look how cute it is! I just love this Grinched Christmassy themed bag. I love that we have like the decorative panel on the front and then, you know, the Grinchy fabric on the back, the waterproof canvas inside. It not only protects the fabric from any sort of moisture from your water bottle, but it also provides a lot of structure. So the bag keeps its shape really nicely. Let's open up this zipper on the front, pull it down. We have a slip pocket here, a slip pocket here, credit card slots here. So this is just the perfect bag if you just have to run a quick errand. If you just have to pop into the store, you don't need everything. You don't need your makeup, you don't need the notebook, you don't need the big wallet, you don't need all the things. You just need the bare necessities so you can get in and get out. This is also great if you're going for a walk. I'm over here in Florida, we go for walks on the beach all year round. I always bring my water with me, so this is perfect for a walk on the beach. If I end up eventually going to another Disney theme park, this is a great bag for the Disney theme park. It's just such a beautiful bag and such a unique idea, but it's one of those ideas where you hear it and you go, huh, that's different, that's interesting, but then you make it and you're like, I'm gonna use this every day. This might become my most used bag. So, Linz, thank you so much for creating the pattern. Thank you especially for allowing me to film a tutorial for this. Like I said, the designer herself has an amazing tutorial for this bag. I will have a link for it down in the description below. I hope that this tutorial inspires you to go out and make one of these H2O to go bags. They are so much fun, they are so adorable. They are perfect Christmas gifts for anybody on your list, but especially your friends and family who are always carrying around a water bottle with them. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye.